Hey guys, it's Chris, and today on Amiga Stuff, we're going to be doing something a little bit, uh, you know, not different. Amiga Stuff, what do we got going on? I received a note, an email, from Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil, for real. Dr. Phil. Anyway, it says, uh, well, let's backtrack. So, about maybe a year ago, I had two of the GVP A500 HD8s. I did the video on the retro brighting. Um, one of them had like a slice in the plastic where someone cut it for apparently an external or additional cable. And I had two. Uh, a, a subscriber reached out to me, Dr. Phil, and asked if I uh, would sell one. I don't usually sell Amiga stuff. I kind of hoard it, maybe. But I could tell he really needed one. And you know, prices are crazy. I didn't sell it for anything major. I said, sure, give me XYZ and you know, we'll do it. So he did, and I sent it off. Had a Quantum 52 meg hard drive, whatever. Had four megs of RAM, and uh, worked fine. And it looks like this. This is my GVP HD8. It has a button for the game mode so you can turn the hard drive auto boot off and on. Um, I think a Revision 4 ROM was in both of them. Nothing extravagant. Quantum LP52S, I think I have the same drive in here. Workbench 2, uh, modded for internal power so you did not need to run the external big brick like this one. So what happened? Um, Dr. Phil, something happened to the hard drive, usage, I don't know. Something just happened to it. So he wrote me a letter, uh, an email, and he said, uh, Hey, I'm ha I bought a SCSI SDV4 from AmigaStore.eu, and I can't get it working. It won't do this. It's not formatting right. It keeps failing. Uh, here, you can have it. I said, No. I said, Why don't you send it to me, and I'll fix it, and then I'll just send it back. You know, I'll put Workbench on it for you, and you're good to go. I don't, I don't need to keep it. So he wrote me a, wrote me a nice note. It says, uh, Amiga Chris, a hearty thank you for offering to try. I have tried this card with 1.3 through 3.2 different CPU cards, stock or 68K. Um, sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't. It won't format cylinder 2 or bad blocks. Crazy. You can keep it or return it, whatever. I'll send you some PayPal bucks if you do fix it. Best, Dr. Phil. You don't have to send me anything. I will fix it and I'll just send it right back. It's okay. That's kind of what I do. I like helping people out, in case you haven't noticed. So what is this tower of discs? Well, I have to find a certain series of discs. We're going to be using the Amiga 500 Pi Storm without the Pi Storm. Uh, put a 68,000 back in it to get it stock. I want to have a base unit, just how the user would go. We're going to take the SCSI to SD version 4, load the old SCSI to SD util on the uh, Super 17 inch turd Windows 10 machine and I'll show you how to do a quick and dirty. Uh, I'm going to look at his card and we'll see what we come up with. This big pile is because I have different things like all my original Commodore discs and some randos and some other stuff and you know I have a couple discs I might need to use. So I'm going to try recording this on the camera with OBS and using the microphone. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be removing this card which is a one gigger and I guess I'm gonna toss one of my cards I have a 16 gigger here somewhere I have a 16 gig Kingston also I'm gonna uh, partition one gigs kinda light I'll do the one gig uh, probably just one big partition DH0 and I'll split this into a couple twos um, the GVP impact series 2 ROM doesn't do super large hard drives so I'm gonna stick to Amiga compatible drives we can bust out several partitions in a 16 gig drive just to let it rip. But I'll probably just do two, DH0, DH1. Teach a man to fish. We can do these for your own, and I'll show you the process. I've done it before, SCSI to SD setups in my previous videos. This is a version 4.2 from AmigaStore.eu. Slightly uh, different revision card, similar way in how it works. You just need the older SCSI to SD utility. I'm going to insert the card into my card reader and it made no noise is it there oh okay here it is 962 it's an empty card well let's check it real quick if this was supposed to have been formatted 
This is a fat card with 32k. It's formatted fat. That's not how SCSI to SD works. So what we'll do is I'm going to erase it again just to be sure using the SD card formatter. It's called SD. Okay, we'll do quick format. Just let it eat. Fine. Done. It's a fat 16 card. 962.11 megs. Remember that. They're doing this toilet paper math. So the card is formatted. I'm going to eject the card. I'm inserting the card back into the SCSI to SD and we're going to hook it up. So now I'm going to launch the SCSI to SD. It's going to open a log. Uh-oh. Bad CRC. See that? Well, that means it's trying to read something on devices. By default, you get one device checked off and oh, there you go. You wonder why you got a bad CRC. I got a one gig card and a two gig partition. So we're going to do this to 900 or click auto and we're doing 900 megabytes, not gigabytes. So we're going to call this SD zero. Why? Because I'm on hard drive zero. Now I can continue for device two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the logical unit numbers in that bus by simply checking the enable and then you just hit auto and it would pick up where you left off and you could continue. But the default size is always two gig. If you try to format or create a two gig partition and then uh, make it a one gig card when it only has 900 megs of space, that's what you're gonna get. So all we have to do is do uh, save to device and what it's going to do, it's going to run through here. On the SCSI to SD, you'll see right here that it is uh, blinking away as the screen writes. It's almost done and done. Now we can just simply unplug our card. And that, let me back the camera up here. I'm doing two at once. And that's the SCSI to SD setup. It's pretty simple. That's, I have one hard drive on here with 900 megs of space. Now, for S and Gs, I'm going to do that again. So we're going to take the same drive. Now, first, I'm going to take this 16 uh, gigabyte Kingston card I have, and we're going to put that in here. Now, again, since I just wrote, it's going to fail. See that USB HID failure? Well, I kind of... Uh, unplug the card plug this back in with a 16 gig card I have a register that registers now see all right now I'm gonna go to device we're gonna give this let's give it uh, two gigs is fine we're gonna call this uh, ID zero and we're gonna call it SCSI to SD zero pressing enter we're gonna hit auto and then we're going to go here to device two and we're going to enable the target, check auto, and we're going to give it, let's give it three gigs, 3.5 gigs. Let's really push the limit here. And then we're going to call this ID one and SCSI to SD one. That way when I'm in HD toolbox or fast prep expert prep of the GVP card, I can see, I can continue because this is a, uh, large card so two five and a half i got a 16 and keep on going this is two so i'll do id two and then call this two if it's if it shows it that's the problem because it sd id zero is a vendor id one is a vendor and id two is a vendor this device three id two screws me up so now we'll just choose file save to device there we go. Capacity, all that stuff is, it's ready. 4.83 firmware, the old one. We're gonna close it. Now I'm gonna unplug it. Okay guys, so as you just saw, we did the SCSI to SD, we did uh, the 16 gig card. I have the one gig card too, but I rewrote it with a 16. So I'm gonna give Dr. Phil back his one gig card, and we're just, this 16 gig card, you can carve out some more. I'm just showing you, and then plus I'm providing a working image. Now, the cool thing about the SCSI to SDV4, is you'll see I have a uh, micro SD here, or a SD card here. Flip her on over to the south side, you got a little one on the bottom. You can put a, a, a micro SD card in there too. Both of them work, it works the same way. It had an SD, I have SDs, that's what we're using.
Now for static electricity wires and protection, I'm just going to put a bag there with a the note. So these are called Fast Prep. These are for 4008. Uh, different GVP cards that I've had through the years. They're all Impact Series 2. So I made a copy of the 207 original disc that I have. Uh, that way when this floppy, which sounds really bad, needs to uh, chew it up, it can feel free. I also dug out a, uh, this is a 205 ROM in here, so I have my install uh, copies of 2.1. I own the, uh, uh, I own the original, so that's no big deal. The reason I left this power not modded is I can turn this unit on and I will get a light that you can't see. So this light can come on. Normally the hard drive has to spin up. When you put your turn your Amiga on, it'll spin up the drive and there you go. So I am using the uh, DB23 to VGA connector. The Dell U2410F will display 15 kilohertz modes. It's going to ask me if I want to run fast prep or expert prep, at which time I will say expert prep. So do you want to run fast prep? No, I want to run expert prep. So as you can see here, after the SCSI to SD setup, I named the vendor ID 0, so I knew what partition was what. It confuses you sometimes if they're all named the same. So what I do is I just hit, uh, I go to page 2, this is exclusive to the GVP series. You can toggle between boot or mount or no mount. I just leave it on boot, go back to page 1 and I say write this setup, yes. Activity light and repeat the process for your other two partitions. Now I don't know the limits, so remember the second partition was also 2 gigs. Perfect. This one's called DH1. It should keep going. We're going to go to page 2 and we're going to make sure this one is mount. Perfect. And for this exercise, we're going to say write this setup. Yes. So we wrote that setup. We're going to continue to the next one, which was 3 point and some change. Doesn't see that one. See, ID2. Okay, normally under GVP, I actually have to add a partition. I don't know why these had two partitions on them. Who knows? I'm going to go to the next, the bigger one. Here we go, 3,891. Now I noticed something. This says it was 3.5 gigs, but it only holds two. You can only do two. I could do another partition, and I could add the space up here, and do some crazy math, and I would see it. Okay, so that's another way you can do it if you carve out a massive card. But I just did different IDs. That's easy for me. So here's ID2, 3.8 gigs. We're going to do one partition. We're going to call this one, I don't know why I went to DH0 again, DH2, fast file system. Oh, it is picking it up. 3882, 3891. I guess we need some overhead. Boot priority, negative, whatever. Don't care. Page 2, this is going to be mount. Page 1, and write this setup. Yes. Done. Now you can go back, and if you want ID0, you can say Amiga DOS format, format the hard drive. It mounts it as a temporary buffer, formats the drive. Uh, Amiga DOS format DH1 too. Yep. Now the funny thing is, I'm not going to format the last partition. I'm just going to put an install disk in, and we're going to reboot. Because With the system booted off the floppy workbench or install 2.1 here, you can see that it actually was successful, but it named them weird. So I'm going to go ahead and format these regular Amiga format. DH0A should just be D. Okay, so device DH0 was named DH0A. So we're going to call this one system. And no trash can. We're going to do international mode. Quick format always on non-rotational media. All right, we're going to DH1A. We're going to, again, format this. Now, these were the ones that were formatted off the GVP disk. Normally, it doesn't work for me. I'm going to call this one work. Same thing. Initializing disk. These partitions are not so large where they're going to cause memory issues from buffers. I have enough RAM in here to hold all of them. 
DH2, oops, DH2, again, this is a 3.5 gig, I think it's going to come out to. 3.87. We're going to call this DH2. Fast File International. Now remember, this is Workbench 2.1. So there we go. Backdrop pet peeve. So we have System Work and DH2. I could call this one DH1. Maybe I will. DH1. Whoops. One. Let's make sure that it's still. Not format. I just want to make sure device and volume is DH1. Perfect. So system DH1 and DH2. Now you can see I could continue on with the entire uh, naming convention, or I could have made one Mama Jama uh, device maximum of the card and partitioned it accordingly. I like to have separate IDs. It kind of works better with the SCSI to SD versus having all of your eggs on one partition. So I'm going to go ahead and blast through the install 2.1. That took forever. During this time, I suffered a terrible accident. What happened? I cracked my freaking 500 lid. How did I do that? I backed my chair up because, you know, I'm fat and I got to kind of get a rolling start to get these wheels moving on this Burberish carpet, matte floor rug thing and I, my wheel hit the hit the lower part of the floppy thing it broke into three pieces so while that was installing I crazy glued those pieces on and I have them and I need to kind of put them back in the best I can somehow so there we go I think I'm missing a little piece on the bottom at least I got it that sucks donkeys if you're working and you have 18 million things on the floor, just be careful of your surroundings, guys. Treat your Amiga lids like you're driving your grandma to church. She's wearing a white dress and she got a bowl full of beef gravy. Not fast. Don't hit any bumps. Take your time. Watch where you're going. So we're rebooting. Uh, this will do a white screen as it checks the SCSI bus. It's looking through all the logical unit numbers. Here we go. There's our light. There's our light. This is the car. This is what you'll see on the outside. Can you even see that red light right here? I don't know. It's very bright in here for me. So there we go. We have a Workbench 2.1 with my 4 megs of RAM, 1 mega chip. Workbench 2 gigs here. And we can get rid of the log file. That's great. Prefs. I even put directory works on here. So you could have some type of uh, file management I always had. So what I like to do is this. I love this program for this little button in the middle. Flip, and then you can call another directory. This mouse has got dirty balls. I'm going to take the disk info. Whoops, no, 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 no. Just the disk info, and I'm going to copy to DH1 and also DH2. Why? That way they'll all have the same hard drivey icon. There's DH1, and there's DH2, 3.8 gigs. Three hard drives, three hard drive icons of the same thing. I'll do some positioning, snapshot them, and then we're good to go. I'll send Dr. Phil a message and let him know that everything's working out. Maybe even shoot a little video. Um, I'm going to give him his one gig card back. I'm just going to toss this 16 in. I got 8 million of them. Don't even worry about it. Um, I enjoy helping others out, and you know I like enjoy saving Amigas and doing what I can to help others save their Amigas. That's why I do these videos, mainly so I can remember things when I forget them. There we go, we saw the workbench screen. We have three nice hard drive icons in the wrong order. I like my system drive underneath RAM, and yes, the display properties are basic color right now. So we have a hard drive, we have some stuff, we have basic workbench install. So, Dr. Phil, you should have your card back by the time this video airs, because you know I film and edit way off schedule, and it's rando. Right now it's the, what is it, end of March, beginning of April, something like that. End of March, 6.21 p.m. I'm going to go fire down some quesadillas. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this helps you if you have a SCSI to SD version 4, and you're having some issues, or just SCSI to SD in general. Please keep note that your hard drives controller will control the maximum hard drive size 
that you can use. So if you have like a 128 gig card, don't think you're going to carve out a 100 gig partition and make it work reasonably fast on a regular 68,000 Amiga. You're in for a world of hurt. Keep it to an Amiga partition type. Make a whole bunch of them on one like you saw I did. You can have 20 partitions of 2 gigs. It's going to drive you bonkers. But remember, this is the 1980s to 1990s. So if you enjoy it for that, you'll have years of entertainment for a long time, hopefully. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, I hope you learned something.